all right what's up everyone oj here welcome back to another video and goodness gracious do we have a lot to talk about when it comes to persona xenoblade new team ninja and a nintendo direct yes there is a lot but before we get into that please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now we're starting off with xenoblade chronicles and the hype that is leading into this game that is causing something to happen it's like a chain reaction and i love to see this because we see it usually whenever a sequel comes out people start getting interested in the franchise but it seems like with xenoblade chronicles 3 coming out in july the thirst or the overdrive for xenoblade chronicles 1 and 2 has been heightened all the way up at this point because it looks like there are brand new copies of xenoblade chronicles 2 that are floating around in the wild heck we even saw xenoblade chronicles 2 torn of the golden country kind of go back on sale with new copies apparently some retailers are actually getting requests for these games from consumers and then those retailers ask nintendo to print more and then apparently they get them on that basis so you're not going to see a huge influx of those copies going out there so you're not going to see like 50 of them on the shelf at walmart or something but it does seem like certain retailers around the world are getting new copies of xenoblade chronicles 2 and we actually have some more proof of this because shout outs to my girl jcat jody over on twitter she showed that xenoblade chronicles 2 has actually re-entered the top 30 charts in japan of new copies so you have to remember guys these aren't digital copies these aren't used copies these are new copies so therefore more new copies were printed or somebody found a cast somewhere of like a thousand copies of xenoblade or something like that for it to enter the top 30 once again we did see an uptick in xenoblade chronicles 2 and the definitive edition sales on the eShop as well so i think that this all leads to very good things with xenoblade chronicles 3 and i see xenoblade chronicles 3 doing extremely well because of all this hype and more people playing xenoblade chronicles 1 and xenoblade chronicles 2 so definitely a good thing and i think that it's going to lead honestly to xenoblade chronicles 3 being the easily the biggest opening for a monolith soft game of all time now the previous record i think is xenoblade chronicles 2 when you put in digital sales that was over 100,000 units so i think that's pretty much the previous best so i think that we could easily see 150,000 or so for xenoblade maybe even more if the review scores from famitsu and if the review scores when it comes to the western press is better because it's not just about japan I think that the debut sales for over here in the West are going to be fairly large too, just because more and more people are getting into Xenoblade and they're building off a huge momentum of Pyra and Mithra in Super Smash Brothers and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 being the best selling Monolith Soft game of all time with over 2 million units. So I think that that's going to snowball into Xenoblade Chronicles 3 doing extremely well. And this is some of the evidence that we're seeing of that. But what are your thoughts when it comes to xenoblade chronicles 2 re-entering the top 30 and the hype heading into xenoblade chronicles 3 let me know in the comment section below all right guys here we go again nintendo direct rumor time now i do want to say something here guys this is once again a rumor so do not take it as 100 fact and i also want to correct myself on what i reported on just a bit ago with the whole neon white situation and the guy who leaked that obviously that was for summer games fest not a nintendo direct but yeah that was that but people thought it was a nintendo direct because neon white was first announced at nintendo direct so they felt that there was going to be the release date of it at the nintendo direct and that was supposed to be the 16th obviously that didn't happen so people are thinking nintendo's probably not going to have a nintendo direct in june but wait a minute there's more to talk about here because we do have someone that is claiming that there is a nintendo direct this june but it's going to be a lot later than what nintendo usually does so the nintendo direct is apparently planned for june 29th according to a pretty popular writer out there and i think she also works for sony as well alana pierce she used to work at ign so let's get to the beat here from nintendo everything they had the article and they said we're in the middle of june and what would have been an e3 so many can't help but wonder if and when a nintendo direct presentation will air although there's absolutely no confirmation currently 
there's talk that an event could be happening at the end of this month. Now, today's rumor comes from Alana Pierce, a writer that previously worked at IGN and is now with Sony Santa Monica. So during a live stream, Pierce seemed confident in stating that a Nintendo Direct is coming on June 29th. I will not play the clip. I'll have a link for you guys though if you want to check it out yourself. So Pierce doesn't appear to be pulling the June 29th date out of thin air. Based on the way she talked during the stream, she seems to suggest that she has some sort of insider knowledge. However, whether that's actually the case remains to be seen, and while it goes without saying, we'll warn, as we always do, that nothing is official when Nintendo makes an announcement. Now, let's talk about this, guys. We gotta talk about this, because I do think that she probably has heard some information on that, and obviously she does not work for Nintendo, so I don't know if she's not gonna get in trouble or anything. Obviously, she's working for Sony, so she still has contacts maybe at IGN, people that are maybe in the know of what could be happening with that. Now, I might have heard some things that were similar, you know, which it might have been like, let's say, not at the typical area of when Nintendo does their directs, but I will also say this. Alana also said that last year's Nintendo Direct, so E3 2021, was not going to be anything great for Nintendo. She said, don't get excited. There's not really going to be too much or anything like that. You know, and that's when Metroid Dread was announced. So now that's not necessarily the same thing. I'm not trying to sit here and say that this discredits her, but she also, you know, didn't know about Metroid Dread or she felt that that wasn't a big enough announcement. Although, I mean, I don't know why she wouldn't think that. So, I mean, she sometimes just does say things, you know, so maybe she's right. Maybe she's wrong. I'm not really sure on this, but if that is the case, June 29th, that is a Wednesday. So that is from the time that I'm recording this video, that is in another two weeks plus. So it'd be a little bit of time. I think fans are already starting to get kind of desperate, especially considering that Sony and Microsoft have already went at this point. So another two weeks would feel like an eternity for some of these people, especially after some of the news that got announced recently, which we're gonna get into. But it is what it is for right now. What do you guys think about this? Do you feel that Nintendo Direct is happening in June? Do you feel that it's going to slip to a different date? Do you think that all this is bollocks? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, and moving on to the next topic here. I wanted to talk about this because some people probably felt that I'd be upset about the news based on when it was announced and everything, and I am not. And that is Persona 5 Royal, Persona 4 Golden, Persona 3 Portable, all of those games are coming to Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Windows via PC, all available on Xbox Game Pass, and Persona 5 Royal launches this year, October 21st. Now, you guys already know these games. I mean, obviously, Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5, they're all great games, the best versions of the game with the maybe exception, probably not Persona 3 Portable, but Persona 4 Golden, Persona 5 Royal, those are incredible and the best versions of those games. So this is awesome. And obviously having Persona 3 Portable on a HD system modern, that's great. Atlas takes forever to do this. Some people might be thinking, wait a minute, there's no Switch here. There's no PlayStation here. Well, the PlayStation already has Persona 5 Royal, but it does not have Persona 3 Portable on PS4 or PS5. And it does not have Persona 4 Golden on PS4 or PS5. So some people are thinking, wow, this is an Xbox exclusive, which no, they never stated that. They never stated that it was going to be an Xbox exclusive and it's not going to be on any other system. It was just announced for Game Pass at their show. So obviously they're going to do it there because they're getting a huge check from Microsoft. But what this does is that it breaks this 20 plus year thought process, this myth that there is some type of secret hidden ninjutsu backdoor deal between Atlas and between Sony to never have any mainline Persona games on anything but PlayStation. This is stuff that I've been hearing for a decade since I've been covering video games people have just said this oh there's a deal they always go back to like that jack of whatever article that says oh we really like placing that incorrect translation there is no deal it's just sega or just atlas being atlas and not wanting to make money on their great ip for the longest time period and eventually getting a bag at this point but I feel like they could have made this money time and time and time and time over again if they released these in a timely manner. That's great. They get, you know, the bag for Xbox Game Pass, and that's fantastic. 
but I just feel that you're like, why are you doing this all the way at this point? And Persona 3 Portable and Persona 4 Golden aren't even this year, it seems, for like the Xbox Game Pass. October 21st for Persona 5 and Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Portable are 2023, so it's not even like they're all this year. So what that also tells me is that they're probably prepping for other systems as well well they're probably prepping for other systems as well and once again it breaks this myth i have heard it if you go to my comment section on any of my persona videos you know i felt that they were going to announce it for switch first or it's going to come to playstation and all that at some point which i still think that it's going to because these have not been announced as exclusives with persona 3 portable and persona 4 they have not been announced as exclusives okay they just said hey look it's coming to this game pass bam that was that so that's fine. People can be upset that they didn't announce it for Switch or PlayStation or whatever the case is. I don't really care. I've played all these games. I've beat them already. I mean, they're great. I mean, I'm not sure if I want to spend another 100 plus hours in them. However, if they were portable, then it would be a little bit more of a boost for me at least. But I'm happy that they're coming over and I'm happy that this whole myth of it's exclusive and it's only going to be on PlayStation because that's the deal is gone. It's completely gone now at this point. And I'm very, very happy for that. Like, I'm extremely happy that that's finally gone because people have been just saying that for forever and it's not been the case. And anytime that I bring that up, people say, no, it is. It is. They have a deal. They don't have a deal. It's just Atlas making bad business decisions like they always do. It's just Atlas and Sega making bad business decisions. It's just simple, plain and simple, which I already knew that, you know, but now it's confirmed. Microsoft finally kills it with that. There is no exclusivity deal, okay? There really isn't, and if there is, it's gone. But there's no way if they had a 10 plus year exclusivity deal with Persona for Golden or something like that, or Persona 3 Portable. There's no way that they had like these long, huge, decade long deals. There's no way. You know, and if they did, there's no proof. So anyway, that can finally be put to bed and these games can finally come over eventually to all the platforms that they need to come over to. Because remember guys, Persona 4 Golden, still not announced for PlayStation. Obviously not announced for Switch either, but still not announced for PlayStation. Persona 3 Portable, once again, not announced for PlayStation as well at this event or not even in the social media. Obviously they're not gonna announce it at the Microsoft event, but the social media either. So yeah, that's that and I'm happy with it. Shout outs, it's gonna be fun. Um, I know people that really want to play, you know, Persona on Xbox are going to get it all Game Pass, Persona 5 Royal this year. So that's awesome. And hopefully we see it on other platforms with all these other games and everything later. So we'll see. But what are your thoughts on this, guys? Let me know in the comment section below. All right. And moving on to the final topic here, guys, we've got a brand new announcement from Team Ninja, which we all thought was Ninja Gaiden when we first saw it. But no, it's something different. And it actually looks pretty cool. So publisher Koei Tecmo and developer Team Ninja have announced Wolong Fallen Dynasty for the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC via Steam and Microsoft Store. It will launch in early 2023. It will also be available via the Xbox Game Pass. So this is from Mayasaki Yamagiwa, the producer of Bloodborne and Fumihiko Yasuda, the producer of Neo. Wo Long Fallen Dynasty follows the dramatic action-packed story of a nameless Militza soldier fighting for survival in a dark fantasy version of the Ladder Hand Dynasty where demons plague the three kingdoms. Players fight off deadly creatures and enemy soldiers using swordplay based on the Chinese martial arts attempting to overcome the odds by awakening the true power from within. Now here are the key features in the game. Demons in the Kingdom, a dark fantasy set during a chaotic Three Kingdoms period. The narrative vividly tells the tale of a Milita soldier's strenuous fight for survival during a later hand dynasty infested with demons. It's madness in the Three Kingdoms like never before. You can awaken the power, defeat deadly enemies to boost morale, and awaken the power from within, overcome adversity through unique new strategies, including battle styles, based on the five phases and you live by the sword what's after that guys die by it renowned for the ruthless strikes that can change the tide of battle in an instant sword practitioners of the chinese martial arts gracefully change pace as they shift between offensive and defensive maneuvers overwhelm opponents with a flurry of force in a series of intense and bloody battles while learning the precision and skill necessary to become a true master of this sword and this game looks really cool i think it looks dope there's a dragon reminds me of ninja gaiden like the original like that picture like that first like picture that they show off looks really cool 
I'm definitely going to pick it up at some point. Definitely looks really good. Um, kind of looks like Onimusha, like the guy, main character. I mean, so that's cool, right? Anyway, what do you guys think about this? I think it's really dope. I'm glad that Team Ninja is kind of back. They're making new IPs. Got the Bloodborne dude on there. Got the dude from Neo on there. Sounds like a match made in heaven. So I'm definitely going to be checking out this game when it comes out early 2023. So... What are your thoughts on all the different topics I've discussed here, guys? Are you guys excited? What did you think about Microsoft's show overall? Make sure you vote on the community page. Let me know your thoughts on everything in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.